Anyone who has ever visited Berlin has likely seen or even ridden the iconic yellow and red trains that stand out as a symbol of the city's S-Bahn system. In our previous two videos, where we covered commuter rail systems in Vienna and Zurich, we explained the concept of the S-Bahn, so if you haven't watched those yet, we highly recommend checking them out. The Berlin S-Bahn is a cornerstone of the city's public transportation network, playing a vital role in connecting Berlin and its suburbs. It serves approximately 473 million passengers annually, out of the 1.6 billion passengers transported across Berlin each year. This means the S-Bahn carries around 1.5 million passengers on an average workday. While the COVID-19 pandemic caused a significant drop in ridership, the S-Bahn is on the road to recovery, gradually approaching its pre-pandemic performance levels from 2019. With an average travel speed of 39 km per hour, the S-Bahn ensures fast and efficient transit across the city. In 2023, 96.6% of S-Bahn trains in Berlin were considered on time. With some generous leeway in its definition of punctuality, an S-Bahn train in Berlin is considered on time if it arrives no more than 5 minutes and 59 seconds after the scheduled arrival time. Back in 2020, 98.5% of trains met these criteria, and although standards have slipped slightly since then, Berlin still has the most punctual S-Bahn trains in the country. For comparison, the national average punctuality rate in 2023 was 92.5%, highlighting the reliability of Berlin's S-Bahn system. These impressive numbers are supported by the Verkehrsverbund Berlin-Brandenburg, or VBB, a large transportation association that coordinates timetables and services across various transport providers. Covering a vast area, the VBB is one of the most extensive transportation networks in Europe, making it easy for passengers to travel seamlessly across Berlin and Brandenburg. A key advantage of the VBB is its unified ticketing system, which allows passengers to use the same ticket for all forms of public transport within the network, including the S-Bahn, U-Bahn, trams, metrobuses and even ferries. But how did this amazing system come to be? To fully understand the Berlin S-Bahn's importance in the city today, it's essential to look back at its history, which stretches back more than a hundred years, a story so rich that it could fill several videos. The origins of the Berlin S-Bahn can be traced to the construction of the first main lines in 1838, with the connection between Berlin, Zehlendorf and Potsdam. By 1846, the city already had five terminal stations from which routes extended in almost all directions. To connect these lines, the Berlin Connecting Line was built in 1851 along the city wall at ground level. However, the constant traffic, particularly from the military, severely disrupted passenger travel, prompting the need for a new solution. This led to the construction of the Berlin Ringbahn, a bypass railway built far outside the city's settled areas. By the 1870s, the Ringbahn was completed, linking Berlin's growing rail network, and in 1882, the Stadtbahn was added, providing a crucial east-west route across the city. A significant milestone came in 1891, when local transport tariffs were separated from long-distance rail services, laying the groundwork for a dedicated urban transit system. The 1920s marked a turning point when the Stadtbahn and other lines were electrified, paving the way for the modern S-Bahn system. In 1927, the first Stadtbahn trains, branded as ET-165, were delivered, and by 1932, a total of 638 quarter trains had been introduced that enabled different possibilities for train configurations. These trains were first used on the Stadtbahn when electric operations began in 1928, earning them their name. Initially referred to as Stadtschnellbahn, the system was officially renamed Stadtbahn or S-Bahn in December 1930. The introduction of the system proved to be a resounding success as the network expanded rapidly. 
by 1939, it achieved its highest performance in its entire history, transporting 569 million passengers. However, World War II halted this development and caused significant damage to its infrastructure, leaving the system in need of major repairs. After the war, Berlin's division into East and West had a profound impact on the S-Bahn. Although it was operated by East Germany's Deutsche Reichsbahn, it continued to serve both parts of the city. However, the construction of the Berlin Wall in 1961 physically split the network. In West Berlin, many residents boycotted the S-Bahn as a form of protest, leading to a sharp decline in ridership. The reunification of Germany in 1989 ushered in a new era for the S-Bahn. Significant efforts were made to repair and modernize the system, marking a period of transformation and renewal. This process reached a major milestone in January 1994, when Deutsche Bahn was created through the merger of East Germany's Deutsche Reichsbahn and West Germany's Deutsche Bundesbahn. As part of this reorganization, all S-Bahn operations in Berlin were transferred to the newly formed S-Bahn Berlin, a subsidiary of Deutsche Bahn. A key moment in this recovery was the full reopening of the Ringbahn in 2002, which not only symbolized the network's reintegration, but also helped restore passenger demand, as you can see on the screen. Today, the Berlin S-Bahn spans approximately 340 kilometers, with 16 lines powered by a third rail electrification system that uses 750 volts DC power, connecting 168 stations. Its network is organized around three main corridors that shape its routes. The elevated east-west central line, known as the Stadtbahn, the mostly underground north-south corridor called the Nord-Süd Tunnel, and the circular Ringbahn. From the Ringbahn, suburban lines branch out in all directions, connecting the city center to its outskirts. The north-south network includes lines S1, S2, S25 and S26, all of which travel through the Nord-Süd Tunnel. These lines link northern destinations like Oranienburg, Bernau and Hennigsdorf, with southern areas such as Teltowstadt, Blankenfelde, Lichtenrade and Wannsee. The east-west routes consist of lines S3, S5, S7, S9 and S75, which run along the Stadtbahn. Most of these lines stretch westward to Potsdam and Spandau, except for the S5, which ends at Westkreuz, and the S75, which terminates at Warschauer Strasse. To the east, these lines extend to Erkner, Strausberg Nord, Achensfelde and Wartenberg. The S9 takes a unique path, using a connecting curve at Ostkreuz to transition from the Stadtbahn to the southeastern section of the Ringbahn. It also continues its journey to Berlin-Brandenburg Airport, making it a key route for air travelers. At the heart of the system are the Ringbahn lines, which include the S41 and S42, operating in continuous loops around the circular route. The S41 runs clockwise, while the S42 runs counterclockwise, providing consistent service around the city. Additionally, lines S45, S46 and S47 connect the southeastern areas of Berlin to the southern section of the Ringbahn. These lines follow a tangential route from the Görlitzer Bahn via Kölnische Heide. The S45 connects Berlin-Brandenburg Airport to Südkreuz, the S46 runs from Königs Wusterhausen to West End, and the S47 operates between Spindlersfeld and Hermannstrasse. In the north-south direction, lines S8 and S85 operate along the eastern section of the Ringbahn, running between Bornholmer Strasse and Treptower Park before connecting with the Görlitzer Bahn further south. The S8 stretches from Wildau to Birkenwerder, while the S85 operates between Weidmannslust and Grunau. These lines complement the north-south routes that pass through the nord süd Tunnel, ensuring comprehensive coverage across the city. The numbering system of the S-Bahn routes is also worth noting. 
Generally, the first digit of a root number indicates the main root or a group of related roots. For example, the S25 is a branch of the S2, while the S41, S42, S45, S46 and S47 are all part of the ringbound network and share portions of the same root. Collectively, these lines can be thought of as the S4 group, although the S4 itself does not exist as an independent line. The Berlin S-Bahn operates a diverse fleet of trains with different generations of rolling stock serving the network over the years. These trains are specifically designed for the S-Bahn's third rail electrification system. One notable example is the BVG Class 480, manufactured by AEG Siemens and Wagon Union. Introduced in 1986, these trains have been a reliable part of the network for decades. As of December 2022, following necessary technical upgrades, the class 480 units have been reassigned to the S3 line, which runs from Erkner to Spandau. This redeployment ensures continued service on the S3 line, while newer rolling stock is gradually introduced to other parts of the network. The 481-482, manufactured by Adtrans, a predecessor of Bombardier Transportation, was introduced in 1996 and is currently the most common train type in the fleet. Featuring a lightweight aluminum body, these trains underwent a refurbishment that modernized their interiors, enhancing passenger comfort. They operate in both 4-car and 8-car formations and serve a wide range of lines, making them a backbone of the S-Bahn network. In 2021, the 483-484 was introduced as the newest generation of Berlin S-Bahn trains, replacing older models. Manufactured by Siemens and Stadler, these trains feature improved passenger comfort, air conditioning and better accessibility, making them more user-friendly for all passengers. Equipped with modern safety systems and designed for energy efficiency, they operate on lines S41, S42, S46, S47 and S8, marking a significant step forward in modernizing the fleet. One of the unique trains in the S-Bahn's history is the DB Class 488.0, better known as the Panorama Train. Unlike regular S-Bahn trains, this special vehicle was designed for sightseeing, offering passengers a completely different way to experience Berlin. Its large windows extended into the roof, providing an unobstructed panoramic view of the city, and it was equipped with a modern multimedia system that allowed travelers to listen to announcements in multiple languages via headphones. For years, the Berlin S-Bahn used this train for city tours, and it was even available for private rentals. Unfortunately, in 2009, these tours came to an end, and the train was retired from service. To ensure the proper functioning of its rolling stock, the Berlin S-Bahn relies on several depots strategically located across the city. These facilities play a crucial role in maintaining and servicing the trains. Notable depots include Schöneweide, which opened in 1927, Friedrichsfelde, which began operations in 1903, Grunau, which opened in 1910, and Wannsee, Erkner and Oranienburg, which opened in 1933, 1928 and 1925, respectively. Each depot is equipped with the necessary infrastructure to provide essential maintenance and repairs, ensuring the smooth operation of the S-Bahn trains across the city. Regarding further system development, Berlin's S-Bahn network is undergoing significant expansion with the upcoming introduction of the S-21 line. This ambitious project aims to improve north-south connectivity, offering faster and more direct routes across the city, linking major hubs and enhancing overall public transport accessibility. The first section of the S21 line will connect Berlin Hauptbahnhof with the Northern Ringbahn at Westhafen. This phase includes the construction of new tracks and stations to ensure smooth transfers between lines. Initially planned for completion in 2017, 
The project has faced delays, but as of early 2025, the first section is nearly complete. The opening has been postponed due to extended approval processes for crucial network components. The second phase will extend the line southward from Hauptbahnhof through Potsdamer Platz, enhancing connections in central Berlin. The final phase will take the line even further south, reaching the southern Ringbahn at Südkreuz, and will include branches that connect to Wedding in the north and Schöneberg in the south. These extensions will help integrate the S-Bahn network more effectively across the city, providing better access and reducing travel times for passengers. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, consider joining us on Patreon for exclusive content. You can also become a YouTube member to unlock unique perks and benefits. Don't forget to check out our merch store for some great Railways Explained gear. We truly appreciate all the support from our amazing community. Thank you for helping us continue to create great content and see you in the next video.